Hey, Owen, tell me something. Turns out the Cowboys just aren't that good. Dumb. That's true. Welcome, everybody, back to another episode of Dom. That's true. Of course, I'm your host with the host, Truman Steve Sheenstein. As always, I'm joined here by the bomb. Hey, yo. Owen Dom. Owen, how's it going? How's your day going? You know, I can't complain. Yep. Thriving. Thriving. Yep. Thriving. I got Joe's for lunch today. That was cool. Who is? That was good. For free. Stuff. That, ooh. For free. For free. Yeah, I may or may not have double dipped and got a one pulled pork sandwich and one uh, brisket sandwich. Like with catered? Catered such catered such situation. Yeah, we had a uh, lunch and learn kind of situation. That's pretty sweet. That's pretty sweet. It is cool not having to clock out during lunch. That is cool. I do love a lunch and learn. I am now the provider of lunch and learns at my new job. You are. I do. I go to firms and do lunch and learns now. Yeah, that's part of. Oh, uh, you're you're doing the edu- educating. Yes, I educate. Hey, Owen. Before we get too far into this, I do want to thank our Patreons, subscribers, <laughs> our patrons <laughs> over there at patreon.com slash open disaster hey thank you guys for making the show possible over there uh, at patreon.com slash open disaster if you guys want to help subscribe and honestly uh haven't been putting too much bonus content over there we're trying to get better at it i had a uh, again i'm getting back to kind of constant posting and me and vincent are eventually gonna sit down and start doing some bonus episodes again uh you guys go on over there patreon.com slash open disaster big shout out to joe aaron meltbox kansas city they are now open in the Iron District. I didn't know if you knew that. And Dylan, we appreciate you guys. Really do. Appreciate everybody for Where forgetting and District leaving Truman? their subscribe on. Uh, Iron District, up in North Kansas City, mm. just across the river there. It is. It's pretty nice. You know it's, what? Uh, could be, there could be prime real estate come. Yeah, come, come soccer come, season. Well, yeah, not well, that. Well, not only that, but also come a Royals move, perhaps. Is it going that? Is it going up there? There is. There is. That's the there's two locations that they're trying to pick. The second them. site is near the NWSL stadium. No, it's it's like around the Iron District. Oh well, the NWSL stadium's right around the Iron District. It's pretty it, close. Sort of, yeah. It's like a little, minutes. yeah, yeah, but it's not. So like right next to it or anything. Right. But once the NWSL stadium opens, they should reach out to. Uh, they should reach out to the current. I think so. And see if they can advertise because you know when they they throw the advertisements up there. And then you say, hey, we're like two minutes away from the stadium. Bro, imagine catching a good soccer match. And they're going straight to get a Mellow Monster. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think they, their end goal, really, they're big Chiefs fans. I think they want to get into the Arrowhead. Oh, of course. But that's, you know. Get, hey. into, get into freaking M- NWSL first, and there you go. If anything is good enough to be into be in Arrowhead, it's fucking a Melt Monster, dude. Melt Monster's so good. Holy shit. That would be fire. Well, welcome everybody into Dom. That's true. Today we're ta- we're breaking down the Chiefs versus Vikings game. I'm gonna o- ask Owen a couple questions about the game. After that, we're gonna do a little preview of the Chiefs versus Broncos. We're gonna get score predictions. Uh, we are doing overreactions with the overreactor. I did not put it out on social media this week because I was busy. <laughs> I don't want to tell you. You had a busy life. Yeah, I had a wedding and I was the man, I was 40. running around. I was the Chiefs game was in a weird time and that sucks for me to adjust to. Uh, Because I'm old now. (laughs) So I didn't get that in. But I did get in. uh, But luckily, we do have a dedicated fan, Chase. Chase sent us his overreactions because he didn't get to send any last week. So he got to send them this week. Mm. So that's good. By the way, if you're listening to this, you can always send in your overreactions whenever. Yeah. Yeah, send me any overreactions. Comment. Comment your overreactions. Go to YouTube.com. Open Disaster Productions. And hey. Big shout out, uh, and this is probably where it actually comes from. Uh, so we hit 60 subscribers this week on the YouTube, and that's no. not a huge number when you guys talk about Mr. Beast and all those things. But we really do appreciate. It's a big number for us, and we really appreciate Growth you guys for being is there. Good. Let's you know we've been trying to push it. We we I think we started this year under 30. Probably. So we've doubled our subscribers in the in the year. Hell yeah! And uh, it'd be really awesome. It'd be really awesome Christmas gift if we somehow got went crazy. And got up to like 75, but even crazier if we got to 100. Yeah, sure. But that is a pie in the sky kind of idea. But no matter what, we appreciate you guys for subscribing, liking, commenting, give us a thumbs up, do it all. Following, hitting the bell. And we've been seeing some comments. People mostly roasting you in the comments. What did I do? No, you didn't get that roasted. 
But there were some uh, kind of funny comments. Hold on. Uh, I want to see. I'll, I'll read the comments now, just so everybody. You had. Uh, oh. <laughs> Uh, well, actually, uh, last week, uh, Adam Berg, 3979, commented and said, have we considered selling the farm for Devontae Adams? Hmm. I, Raiders I, are never going to trade it with us, man. Exactly. I said we would, but one, it's not really Beach, uh, Veach's style, and two... It's the Raiders that hate us. Yes. Yeah, most importantly, yeah. Like, that's one of those rivalries that even with new ownership and new general management, whatever, that both teams just still don't like each other, man. Yes. Uh, also... <laughs> Adam Berg, uh, two episodes ago, said, oh, and denying the Dolphins harder than Republicans in climate change. Well, yeah, because look what happened to the Dolphins. Sweet. I was correct. Appreciate you guys. They're uh, frauds. They can only beat bad teams. Uh, so. Somebody commented and said, Owen, Owen, beating bad teams is what good teams do in support of the Chiefs. Also, Owen, the Dolphins have played the deaf and blind, so they aren't actually good. They're okay that was two weeks ago Once again, when, when they were immediately proven to not be that good so thank you um but they beat the hell out of patriots this week the patriots are saint mary's school of the deaf and blind oh and before looking it up how many teams are tied at the top of the afc four i believe what four teams do you think are tied at the top of the afc chiefs oh wait bill's lost I know it's Chiefs and Dolphins for sure because they both have one loss. Um, I thought I was, for a second there, I thought it was Bills. Not anybody from the AFC North. AFC South. Oh, no, yeah, just two then. It is just, just those two at the four and one. Chiefs in the driver's seat because they have not lost inside the conference. Well, those two teams are four and one right now. Yeah. Just interesting. Who would have thought that the Patriots are now the easy game for the Dolphins? Also, the NFL uh, looking dumber and dumber for allowing the Chiefs to send over the Dolphins game instead of the Chiefs-Bears game. That yes. is unfortunate, as that could be a marquee matchup for, I guess, AFC. Yeah, number one seed. Probably. Could be. And, but the Dolphins are going to play a good team eventually again and lose. So. All right, they got a pair. I, I'm interested to see them play oh, – gosh, I was going to say the Jets or the Bills, but I'm nope. not. Uh, well, the Bills already beat the hell out of them. Yeah, they'll just lose to the Bills again. Um, Panthers – I mean, Dolphins' next couple games, once again, St. Mary's School of the Deaf and Blind. Uh, <laughs> Panthers' next game. Well, oh, tough one. But then they will go ahead and go to the Eagles um, and lose – wait, yeah. Oh, Miami plays Dolphins Panthers. Eagles. Panthers, then Eagles, then Patriots, then Chiefs. They'll probably go two and two of those. Yeah, games. they will go two and two. They will beat the crap out of the Patriots again. The Eagles will take them out back behind the woodshed. Um, and then uh, the Chiefs could be a close game, depending on how uh, the Chiefs' offense is looking. If Dolphins beat the Eagles. And then they play the Raiders, then they play the Jets, and they play Commanders, then Titans, then Jets again before pl playing a good team in the Cowboys. Are we sure the Cowboys are a good team? That's crazy. You're calling the that's crazy that you're denying the Dolphins being a good team and you're calling the Cowboys a good team. That blows my mind. Uh I well, I meant like a decent team that's not St. Mary's School of Deaf and Blind. You see Dak last night? Yeah, he was bad. <laughs> I don't know if we can call that. He was uh, bad. But I well, would you say that uh the Cowboys are better than the Patriots or the Broncos? To which we would say yes. The Cowboys are better than the Patriots and the Broncos? Yes. Yes, I would say that. Yes, yes. the Cowboys would beat both those teams by 25, just like the Dolphins. Those teams are so bad. I'm I'm worried about what's going to happen to the Dol to the Broncos after this weekend. I think they're going to go into full teardown mode. I think there's they're get, they're going to There's lose. already there's already rumblings that the Dol that the uh, Broncos are soon facing a teardown. Yeah, and they're screwed because they gave up a whole bunch of picks. That would have been worth something, and they paid a whole bunch of money to Russell Wilson. Yes, yeah, they really—they're so screwed for the next three, four years. They are honestly set up worse than those Texans teams that let Bill Bill O'Brien trade away DeAndre Hopkins for David Johnson, and yeah, and signed Deshaun Watson to a long. Yeah, at deal. least at least they didn't have to pay DeAndre Hopkins, or or I guess um, they didn't pay Deshaun Watson. They didn't play. Time. They at least they didn't have to play Johnson when when they when they traded for him. True. They didn't have to pay him near as much as they were going to have to pay DeAndre that, that year. Hopkins could have made that team a contender. 
Yeah, but then, you know, the Deshaun Watson situation happened, so. That's true, too. All right, well, enough about the <laughs> the rest but of the NFL. But if that would have happened, maybe they wouldn't have got their now franchise quarterback, C.J. Stroud. That's true. All right, enough about the Chiefs, uh, about the NFL. Let's talk Chiefs Vikings. Owen, give me, uh, what's your number one takeaway? That the Chiefs corners are really good. Interesting. That's my number one takeaway. They did shut down Justin Jefferson. They Three catches, t- 38 yards. Yes, and he did go in the fourth quarter, which is also where he yards. does a lot of his damage. Sure. But they uh, they put the smack on him just a bit, honestly. I'm with you there. They, they kind of clamped him. Um, and once again... I, you know, I hope Justin Jefferson isn't hurt. It sucks to see, you know, the number one wide receiver in the league, bar none, go out hurt. But, you know, maybe that, you know, and the Vikings field has the most injuries over the last 10 years of any field. So maybe. Is that true? More than MetLife? You are more likely to get injured at the Vikings stadium than any other stadium, according to like just sheer numbers of injuries over the last 10 years. That blows my mind. Yeah. So maybe that'll help us get, um. Grass fields enforced. They're one of four fields left with uh, with it's like, like slim felt or like slim. I forget what they call it. The it, it's a certain kind of. There's only four kinds of turf that are like that kind of turf. Yeah, it's like them MetLife. I would say probably Indy. Uh, probably Tottenham oh. Hotspur Stadium has that field. Do they have turf? They have grass for the soccer team. And it is turf. For the NFL? They, they don't have the same grass. I, do, I was thinking when I was watching the game, I was like, man, this is really good-looking grass. No. So that the, makes sense. The Premier League, I, I was like, those lines are so white. Yeah, the Premier yeah. League soccer grass is a totally different thing than NFL turf. Because like Premier League soccer grass is softer yeah. so that the ball moves better because you're not – you know, right. you're not slamming into somebody as much. You're wanting to glide across the top of it versus uh, – that's a weird graphic they're showing us right now in a Monday Night Football. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, it's, but you're trying to you know, glide across the top of it versus, like, dig into it and get pressure from right. shoving somebody. Well – So, like, you can't use the Premier League grass because it'll just get destroyed. I, th- I don't think they're counting that in the, like, count of what oh, yeah. NFL stadiums have that kind of turf yeah, left, but not. I'm just – uh, I, bet I wonder Atlanta. if the Munich field is going to have turf or grass. That is a great question. Luckily, the Chiefs, I don't think, are the first game in Munich. I think there's a team. It doesn't matter. There's, there's a, a team called that. Bayern that's playing in Munich, so they probably won't pull out their grass. Bayern Munich, even, maybe. Yes. Yeah. They'll probably put out just regular turf, too, which isn't the greatest. Tired of playing on turf fields, I'll tell you that much. It's weird. It's it's so weird how, like, you know, we went from Astro turf, which everyone thought it was – not great to turf, and then people are realizing that you know cleats getting stuck in turf isn't the greatest thing of all time either. Is the Raiders field real grass? I think it is real grass. They've got grass stains on their jerseys. I think so. Yeah, that's weird. Interesting. Well, they've gotten like you know ways to maintain grass like really well. It's true. I think every field should be grass. Chiefs field is grass. I think it would be hard for Minnesota's field to be grass. Yeah. I'll say that. But they they are in a dome. Yes, that's why it'd be hard for it to be grass. Why? Because they doesn't get enough sunlight. Sure, but a green lo- greenhouse doesn't get direct sunlight either. It's grass, man. Yeah, but it gets it gets indirect sunlight. I feel like grass would grow quick enough. All, you could just tarp it. That's fair. I feel like they can do it. They could probably figure the, it the out. The thing about grass is that turf takes zero dollars of water to water, yes. and grass takes lots of water. Uh, dollars of water to water yeah that goddamn turf field in minnesota just about fucking cost us travis kelsey first season that shit would have been <laughs> fucking awful yeah um but i mean once again you know i i think it would be tough to fully enforce a grass enforcement but you know I, I i feel like if we just keep seeing a significant amount of injuries on turf versus regular grass they're gonna the nfl pa they're gonna nfl pa is gonna demand it they've already written they've already written i mean they can't demand it demand it it's not really a reasonable demand to bring to owners, and I get that, but I also don't really, I don't know, I don't really support that either. I think you can, I, I think it's it'll be a significant, a significant engineering challenge, but I think they could solve it. Yeah, I, I sure. think if anybody could solve it, it's probably the most wealthy sports league in the world, and that's why I look at you, is because there's an obvious I contender. I don't 
Well, in terms of team value, yes. I'm not sure in terms of revenue. But well, it's because there's only 20 Premier League teams. Well, and the really, is, there's only like 10 teams that stay there all the time. Yes. Yeah, so, I don't know. I think the NFL is probably still bigger. And I feel like it probably makes more revenue, too. It depends, though. Because around the world, people more people watch Premier League than watch the NFL. But... Um, Man, I'm still American brained. That I, I'm, I'm American brained enough where that doesn't even sound right saying it. I don't know why. It just doesn't. I, it's just one of those things that because we live in America and the NFL is number one. Yeah, well, and it's when they're playing these like. Well, you know, cricket's number one in India, but we never hear about that. Yeah, but it's not number one in the world. Right, but soccer is the number one sport in the world. Right, that's fair. I agree. I don't know. It's just you are American brained. I'm I'm choosing to be American brained right now. The NFL probably does make more revenue because Americans are w- more willing to, uh, you know, pay for expensive cable packages. That's true. That is true. Yeah. Hmm. And okay. gets and gets more commercial revenue because you know Tahiti Sports Network ain't really putting the NFL on there. This isn't exactly a Chiefs versus Vikings takeaway. This is a we, <laughs> no, we are so is, off you know, track I don't here. know how we even got here. Well, we were just talking fields, and then we got talked about turf, and I said if anybody yeah, had no money. Yeah, it's the corners, like I said. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, uh, Trent McDuffie and uh, Legereus need the real deal. That's fair. I have a couple questions for you regarding that. Uh, regarding the game, everybody's going to ask this. Oh, I know. I, I wanted to ask this just to see you roll your eyes, Owen. Are the Chiefs getting all the calls? No, guys, are we watching the game? I mean, we like, are okay, the worst part about these last two weeks is that if you're a Chiefs fan and you actually watched the game, you would know that the Chiefs actually got screwed over by calls more than the other teams we played. Well, you see, Owen, the difference is that the Chiefs are committing those penalties. It's that they're also committing the other penalties and not getting called. Yeah, I mean, fuck. I don't know, man. It's... <sighs> Chiefs had 10 penalties to the Vikings for. That's all you got to say. That pass interference call at the end of the game is never a pass interference in a million years. No, the, the pass interference call never saw be a the call. ball. The pass interference, I don't think, should be the call. Never saw the ball. I think anybody who's calling that a PI is dumb. No, dumb. And the I, I saw people, and I also saw people complaining about the MVS PI, which is even dumber. How? Well, because MVS he gets got a, slammed a full two steps before. Well, MVS gets a like hand around him, and kind of hugs him a bit. But that's uh, – honestly, that's just one of those veteran moves is what I'm going to call that. The one where he's coming back for the ball for the underthrown ball? Yes. That. Right. Well, he slams him. But when he slams into him, he kind of pulls him down with him to make it look a little more like he got tackled. Whatever. Which it, is – No matter fair. what, it's going to be a call. Right. He bashed into him early when he was coming back for the ball. That's I one of those ones you. where it's really annoying to be on the defense side of that because it's not a good throw. No. I hate that. I hate that play. And and it's one of those plays that you watch when it happens to your team. You're like, God fucking damn it. Just like the coverage is throw. spot on for a good throw. But right. for an underthrown ball, it's just not, uh, you know, quote, good defense. Right. But, I mean, one one thing they did, they did miss the call on Jerry Sneed. But I think people are misunderstanding that that 15-yard penalty wouldn't have gotten the Vikings the first down. Yes, but then people are also saying, one, people are also misinterpreting that because they're saying that those dummies. So... The Chiefs had the ball, got the ball with the 25 after that. Yeah. So people were like, well, they would have been kicking it from 15 yards deeper when they Didn't punted. did Tommy Townsend punt that in the end zone? Tommy Townsend did punt a touchback, and two, it would have been only 12 and a half yards back. <laughs> but, but also, <laughs> but also, <laughs> we were talking about this at work today, actually. And I was talking, I, one, there was a hands to the face during that play also. But two, I'm done debating holding calls. Hands to the, I'm down. I'm down. I'm done debating anything that happens inside the trenches, because that is absolutely whether or not a ref sees it, and they don't. And there's holding on every play, and there's probably hands on the on hands to the face on more plays than you realize. Also, and speaking of last week when uh, Mike Dana had his fucking <laughs> had his fucking helmet pushed off with a hands to the face and. And Justin Reed tripped over it and allowed it and allowed that touchdown fade to the tight end. That was illegal hands to the face, but it really wasn't worth complaining about. But I think just a lot of those calls inside the trenches get missed. It's very hard to see all five linemen at no. all times, and there's only really one line judge who gets to look at that. Yeah, yeah, there's one guy whose job it is to look at that. And you know, when you see 
10 freight trains slamming into each other. I, I can forgive you for not seeing a dude wearing black gloves against, uh, you know, uh, with another guy wearing black gloves, you know, in a, in a bright light situation where someone has white, a white jersey. It was also a heavy blitz where Trent McDuffie was making contact with Kirk Cousins as that hands to the face was happening. And the ref is definitely watching how, Kirk, how Trent McDuffie is hitting Kirk Cousins whether or not he's touching the ball, whether or not Kirk's arm's going forward, there's a lot more going on in that situation that I understand him missing the hands to the face against Drew. And this is kind of where we go with my position on like having like a video assisted referee. If if the NFL wanted to, they could do like a VAR kind of thing, like like Premier League Soccer does, and get and call every single penalty that happens. But it's not what you want. But that's, that doesn't make for a good game. It's not what you want. There they, would be penalties again, like we said. There's holding on every play, literally. Nothing would happen. If they called every single penalty that every per, every person did, you would not want, want to watch it. It would be an unwatchable product. Yeah, I don't think it would be like that. But to answer the question, no, the Chiefs not, are not getting all the calls. And it's, it's kind of ridiculous that we're, we're here at this point. Um, the Vikings had the ball, guys, with a minute left, over a minute left. No timeouts, though. Doesn't matter. Yeah, they, if, they if, had if, their If I told you, Truman, end of the game, Chiefs are down seven. The Chiefs get punted the ball with one minute and 13 seconds. Well, one minute three was 63 seconds, I remember. Yep. A minute three seconds, no timeouts. And, and uh, I tell you, Patrick Mahomes needs to get a touchdown. Yep. Is that, are we complaining about that situation? Uh, I'd be a little worried, but I think he could get it done. Yep. But it helps, it helps to have the best quarterback in the world. I also – I will say that – uh, Kirk Cousins also got sacked on the on the Hail Mary anyway. So, and pretty quickly. I'm not sure he would have got it off if he was 15 yards closer. Yeah. The, or 12 and a half yards closer. He and would, would, he Tommy Townsend also kicked it in the end zone. So, the odds are that you guys only really get the ball at like the 20 or the 30. It's only like the, 10 no, yards No, the closer. odds are they probably hit him back farther. It's true. Tommy Townsend punted that give, into the end zone. Give Tommy Townsend a little more room. Which I th- I'm pretty sure with Tommy leg. Townsend, like, only punt of the season that was a touchback so far. It right? is his first touchback punt. Yeah, because he was too close. <laughs> special teams. A lot of people talk shit on the special teams right now, which is fair. Because they missed the fucking fake punt again, which is super annoying. But no touchbacks. Or first touchback of the season and no missed field goals so far. Yeah. I knocked on wood for both of those. Harrison Bucker's healthy. He's, he's pinging them. Straight through, no doubters, too. None of them have been close. We said this last week. I know, but I'm still. Whatever. Yeah, you have a vendetta against my my uh, my good Christian faithful man, Harrison Bucker. <laughs> yeah, well, I know that he isn't taking any substances to get better, get better at kicking because I know he would never take a booster. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Oh, it's my second question to he you. He doesn't have that dog in him. He has a dog backwards in him. He's got that God in him. <laughs> oh, and my second question to you about uh, that comes out of this Chiefs-Vikings game. Uh, is this playoff team without Travis Kelsey? I'm going to say yes with an asterisk. So, in the sense that of a normal playoff team that we expect of the Chiefs, like one or two seed, no. No. But yes, because the AFC West is so bad. That, I was also having that, the same thought. That Noah, that Noah Gray would be good enough to win the division. Once you said there was an asterisk, I was like, oh, yeah, we are in the AFC West. <laughs> uh, the Chargers would give us a run for money. It would be a lot like a lot closer to what the NFC North is. Knockdown, drag out divisional games where you're not sure who's going to win and teams that go outside of their division and, cons- an and constantly underperform. I was thinking AFC North. Oh, did I say NFC North? You said NFC North. I did mean AFC North. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, two teams at three and two at the top. Two teams at two and three. Just playing ugly games and going out and playing. And when they play outside their division, they always disappoint. Yeah. Um, Man, those AFC North games are insane. How the hell does it, do we keep getting this super shit? It, what's weird, though, is I I don't see the decline. Everybody's like, well, Travis Kelsey's declining. I just don't see it yet. He's uh, not had the stats that he's had normally. Because he's been hurt. But he's been hurt. And we were like, well, he's getting hurt, so he's declining because he's getting old. I just think he got a little unlucky. I think if he gets hurt one more time, then it's a trend. Yeah. But remember, you know, being – I don't know. I think he's good enough, man. He can play. He made plays with the taped-up ankle. 
Right. And that play he still where had he 10 like, catches you know, for like 67 yards. Yeah, that play where he beat those uh, in like the third or fourth quarter when after he came out with his ta- ta- uh, taped ankle, he beat those two guys for to get that uh, to get those five yards for a first down on a critical third down. Right. Well, it's funny because everyone's writing off Travis Kelsey as falling off. He's getting hurt, which is weird. He, he's falling off. He's he's cooked. He's done. I, they're not saying that per se, but they're saying that he's falling off. He's getting worse. Uh, I think we're a Travis Kelsey Thursday night, 120, 10 receptions, two touchdowns away from everybody being like, oh, these Chiefs are going to uh, probably get the AFC one seed and go to the Super Bowl again. If that happens on Thursday night against the Broncos, that's exactly what everybody will be saying. If the Chiefs keep it close against the Broncos, which I tell you is probably likely, just because that's always uh, how they fucking play these bad, Thursday night though. games and these division games. The defense has gotten much worse in Denver, which is an underrated aspect of it. Because the Denver defense last year was still fucking awesome. But didn't the – wait, the Brown, the Bears – oh, yeah, the Bears capitulated to the Browns. And the mean, the, Ch- to the Broncos, excuse me. Yes, and the Chiefs' defense was a lot worse last year, too. You know what? Let's just let's just start to break down Chiefs-Broncos. Chiefs, Broncos. That's not the next one? Nice. Yes. So – Okay, so I am under the belief that the Chiefs will play this game semi-close because it's a divisional game. Because they, we always do. They always play these games close, especially in the worst team in the division. To be fair, though. The Chiefs the last, love to play this game close. Yeah, but we always stomped the Raiders when they were the worst team. Now that they're no longer the worst team, the Broncos are. I could see a 40. I could see a 40-burger. It's You it's, know, with Sky Moore underperforming and Justin Ross and Rasheed Rice both having impactful last games, I think we... Maybe see some ratcheting up of the snap hold, count. Hold, hold on. God damn it. This fan base is so goddamn Justin Ross brained. Owen. <laughs> yeah. What You should say Justin Ross just had an impactful game. He had a better game, yeah. Owen, how many catches did Justin Ross have for how many yards? Uh, I believe, I listened to this on 610 this morning, so I, I should know this. Justin Ross was in for, it was either six or eight snaps. <laughs> Got targeted four times, dropped two of them, and had, I think, 12 yards. Yeah, he had like two catches for like 27 yards. <laughs> let's let's pump the brakes on Justin Ross' impactful game. I'm just saying. <laughs> I just want to. Well, listen, I want to believe it because I don't believe in Sky Moore. I'm sorry to say. Uh, No, I don't think anybody's believing in Sky Moore anymore. I think MVS can still do what he does. MVS can still find a pocket in his own. Right. Because he's got that veteran presence. He does, yeah. He's got and that. And once again, I'm still waiting for. He's got that old dog in him. I'm still waiting for Richie James, cautiously, cautiously optimistic. I'm not optimistic at Richie James at all. If he gets 500 yards, that's W. He's not getting 500 yards. But what? What if though? What? But what if though? I I bet you a fiver. I got a fiver. How much do you have right now? Zero. <sighs> a year. Let me tell you. Hold on, let me. Twelve games left. I bet he's got under fifty. I know for almost for a fact that he's got under fifty. I think he has like twenty yards or something. I think he has like two catches. I don't think he caught a single ball. I thought he just fucking dropped him. He's looked awful. He might not even make it. He's got one reception for six yards. Mm. Mm Hmm. Only four hundred ninety-four left. Price is right. Rules. I win. Because I said zero. Only zero dollars, Bob. Only 494 left to go. Hmm. I'm not making that bet with you. I'm not about to make you speak $5. But Cooper Cup is back, and he looked saucy. My, all my fantasy teams are rejoicing. Hamstring. Easy to flare up. Easy to flare up. He's, also He's only got to miss three more games. He's not missing 12 anything. to go. Get scared, buddy. Oh, I think he's missing 25% of the games he's got left. Nope. Because we never speculated it had to be by hamstring. So when I pull up and shoot Cooper <laughs> Cup this week, <laughs> I'm winning this fucking bet, buddy. I-, I want this $5 the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> no one's expecting that. Guess Coop- who's winning Cooper for Cup's it? out this week. Gun. <laughs> Guess who's waiting for him in the tunnel? Me with five smackaroos. <laughs> Oh, and I have insider information. He's not going to play this week. How'd you know? <laughs> Just a feeling. Just on the phone. This is not a threat, by the way. No, I'm no threat to well, Cooper Cup. This is Cup. just a joke. This Cooper is Cup's satire. a great guy. I got no problem with Cooper Cup, for the record. What if Cooper Cup 
uh, analyzed this podcast, predicted where you'd be, and called out a play to kick you in the nuts before you even saw him. God, he's just such a gym rat. <laughs> cerebral. He's such. He's so cerebral. <laughs> I love white guys superlatives, man. They're so funny <laughs> because these poor announcers, they're trying to not say, oh, look, this white guy, he's athletic. Like, and, but they're also like, you know, not trying to make it so when they compliment a white guy, that's what it sounds like. Right. But it always ends up with Jim rat, athletic, sneaky, athletic, deceptive speed. It always goes there. It does. It does have a bit of a vibe of there you go, Whitey. <laughs> so yes. Just every time, any time they do something, I will say. Luckily, you know what? We haven't heard any for Justin Watson yet because everyone's like, "That's my wide receiver one right there." Uh, good hands. I feel like solid hands is another. Dude, that one. fucking catch on the sideline. That was that toe gr- drag was insane. I saw a Vikings fan saying today that that was not a catch. I don't know. You are incorrect. I you. Had it, man. You uh, have do not know ball itis, dude. I, I thought it's I saw two feet down, two toes being dragged. I don't know about you. There was about I, I watched I like because when people were talking about it when I was reading the you thread think it was on frame this frame by frame. Yes, it is. There's like five frames of him dragging those toes. He definitely got it. In. Did you go to the YouTube highlights and 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 no, this is just on Twitter. I was just scrolling that shitty ass buffer bar, mm. but I could see like there was a solid amount of that. People are like, like people will post screen grabs. They're like. Ball isn't even in his hands yet. And you're like, okay, dude. So put And the then ball. you do the scroll of pass, and there's about five frames where that ball is not moving. His hands are not moving, and his feet are on the ground. This is a hell of a catch. Yes. Justin Watson, you know, Truman, here's a quick little overreaction for you. Wide receiver signing of the offseason? No. No. He's definitely the best wide receiver we signed in the offseason so far. I, He's signing of the season right now. I don't know about that. Well, until we see Omanihu, honestly. Oh, that's right. We're getting Omanihu. That is that is part of this Chiefs defense that could get even scarier. It's after this Broncos game we get Omanihu bracket, all right? Yeah. No. No. You got one more game after this. Uh, Wait. It's, it's six game, man, though. Or is it Wait, five? are we four and one? Yeah. Oh, then it is after this Broncos game. Yeah. There's a chance that after this Broncos game, which the Chiefs defense has been playing incredibly. There's a chance that after this Broncos game, you get Nick Bolden and Charles Manicue back in the same game. Oh, my God. This defense is dude, so Mike fucking Dan has been scary, going dude. Crazy. This defense Does is. Mike Dan have four sacks now? I know I said he had four sacks last week. But I know he definitely got a full sack at the end of the game. He's got two and a half last or three week. now. And I've said this before. And uh, I said this sacks? last year whenever we signed Carlos Dunlap. And a lot of people, and I said, listen, that's the kind of move that wins Super Bowls. And you know what we fucking did? We won the Super, Super Bowl. Bowl. Because I brought up the fact that when the Chiefs have two guys who who sack, who sack get more than six sacks. Wow, that was struggling to say. Two guys who get six sacks or more and Patrick Mahomes, they have never not won the Super Bowl. That's true. Never not won the Super Bowl. Mike Dana, this year. As? It's either three and a half or four. It's three and a half sacks. Okay. In five games. They didn't give him that half sack then. So that would put him on pace for 11 to 12 sacks. Pretty good. How many sacks does George Kalafis has? Because he had one last game too. Did he? Yeah. No, he didn't. No, there was only, I think there was only two. Oh, no, wait, that was Leo Chanel. I thought it was George Kalafis, but it was Leo Chanel. Hold on. I'm looking it up. We're both getting concerned because... I'm forgetting how to spell George Carlaftis. I spelled it with a C. I'm not a Chiefs fan. Uh, George Carlaftis has only two sacks. That's still on pace for six. Yes, on pace for about seven, yeah. Chris Jones had a sack in every game he's played in for like the last like ten games, which is pretty crazy. That's insane. Uh, Chris Jones has four and a half sacks. At least a half sack per game. One and at least one sack per game. One, 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 one and a half. No, oh yeah, because he didn't play the first game. Holy shit! Yes, that is insane. So and he's on pace for Charles and back. And Charles and And this is back. without our best linebacker. And Nick Bolton's coming back. That's crazy. This is fucking. Anyway, the Chiefs is defense so good, is good. Dude. This is so good. Imagine what happens when the Chiefs offense figures it out. Yes, Vincent, why are you here? 
time for our weekly Bengals bite. All right, real quick. Uh, thank God we were able to fucking beat the other <laughs> St. Mary's School for the Blind team. <laughs> it's interesting that you haven't been here for the last couple weeks for the Bengals bite when they've been getting their shit pushed in. Uh, I, I got nothing to say about that. I, I, no, I literally came on and was like, you know, no, because fucking, yeah, like when we were like, because uh, we started 0-2, 1-1, lost one, right? That's how it's been. 0-2, 1-1, one, one, lost one. 1-1. One, 1-1, one. One, one, yeah. Yeah. Fucking after we lost last week or the we were 0-2, I was like, you know what? It's We've had this coming. I've been a fan of you guys for three seasons now. I'm not allowed to have good things. Like, you know, this is expected behavior. I still think it's funny that everybody's like, the Bengals are back because uh, they b- beat the Cardinals by two scores. Yeah, we beat uh, uh, another I don't know one in four team. Yeah, I don't know if you guys <laughs> know about the Cardinals. Cardinals are not a great team. Yeah. I was like, you know, fucking woo. So, yeah, I, I don't fucking... We did it, thank God. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. thank you, thank you, Vincent, for the Bengals bite. Uh, and then also, something I just as as a sportsman who like doesn't pay attention, are the fucking our defense is just worse this year. There have been so many fucking like forty plus point games this season. Uh, it's not that defenses are worse; it's that teams uh, that the low teams this year are actually very bad. Okay. So it's a lot of while those defenses are bad, it's also a lot of three interception games that put the pressure on the defense. Okay. Or or pick sixes even. Yeah, because so. like normally, you know, a game is like, you know, in the twenties. There have been so many, like 35, 40. We had the fucking what the seventy point game that fucking that was crazy. Like fucking like what is happening? This is see fucking, that's what gives me hope. These are college football destroying numbers. the Broncos. <laughs> to destroy the Broncos. Is that the is that the bad teams are comically bad this year? Mm-hmm. Is that there is not a ton the other of comically in, bad in, in team in that we beat the shit out of the Bears? Like and those teams they are scored a equal. bunch on the Broncos. Those teams are equal. Yes. Yeah. So Justin give me, give me Justin Fields has looked like an actual quarterback the last couple of weeks after he got his shit pushed him. Speaking by the of guys named Justin. Justin Watson's going to eat on the Broncos. Watson, yeah. Watson, yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, that, that's, is that it? that's all I had. Yeah. I'm just fucking. Oh, yeah. NFL is fucking putting up college numbers and it makes me curious. Kind of, and not, then. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. All right. Bengals are fucking back, baby. All right. <laughs> we beat the one in four Cardinals. <laughs> okay. the- Thank you, Vincent. Speaking of uh, segments that are also a little bit off the beaten path that we have not had the last couple of weeks, uh, after we do score predictions here, Owen, I'm definitely calling Sawyer. Uh, real quick to, to know where to ask where Taylor Swift is. Yeah, yeah, we, 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 my dad, Taylor Swift, MIA. Like, yeah, your dad. Yeah, your dad was. Yeah. Uh, and then two. So your dad said that Taylor Swift is ruining the NFL, and then also no, she's not it. He just, he, that he's he sick of. Yeah, that the, yeah. he thought the coverage was a bit much, and then he asked where she was during the Minnesota game. <laughs> it was very funny. All right. Oh, and give me a score prediction. Give me a 35 to 10. 35 to 10? I don't hate that. Uh, I just think there's a little bit more 33 parody. 33 to 10. Give me 31 17. Well, yeah, a little bit more parodies. Yeah. So I'll, I'll be with you. A little bit more parody. 33 10. But I, I could easily see it being 31 27, something stupid. Hi. Hey, where was Taylor Swift this week? Um, she didn't go to the game. She did have a flight out of – she flew into Kansas City Friday night, left early Saturday morning, changed the flight number last minute so people couldn't track it. Interesting. Because the Chiefs definitely fly on Saturday. Yeah, it was so Saturday morning. Right. 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 So she definitely came in after practice was over on Friday and left before Travis left. This is actually – this is like a legit, like, romance, I feel like now. They're having, like, a legit I, relationship. I'm feeling like it's very legitimate now. It's not like a Pete Davidson relationship where you're like, okay, listen, he's not dating Emily, Emily Rajowski right he after he's fucking. He's getting away with this. He can't keep dating every hot girl that's yes. way out of his league. Yes, Pete Davidson just had a very active publicist that kept on answering calls from hot girl publicist. <laughs> um, the NFL did, though, I guess, like remove all their Taylor Swift references. That was a whole thing. Well, she wasn't there this week. I think if she was there this week, I think there may be. But also. There's things in the NFL that are like it's it's cyclical news cycle, so it's definitely like, okay, we had a week or two, we can't do this all season. Yeah, people are getting real. Like, can we get back to football now? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so Taylor Swift definitely still flew into Kansas City. Yes. Okay, they're definitely dating for realsies. For realsies. Swifties still in on tra- on Travis Kelsey. 
We what? Everybody still in? Is it pretty much like a, a group's consensus that everybody's in on with Travis Kelsey? Oh, for sure. And apparently one of his, like, so, like, Daily Mail or some, you know, bullshit came out was, like, was, like, Travis Kelsey's ex warns that he's Inter- a great boy. A teacher, Entertainment Weekly, yeah. She she took an interview with Entertainment Weekly. Yeah, and it was it was a girl who was on, who won Catching Kelsey, and they did yes. it for, like, a month and a half, ten years ago. Yes, it was the girl who won Catching Kelsey. And also, like, she also went on to be on, like, three more reality TV shows after that. Yeah. People have come out on TikTok. They're like, no, I was friends with this girl. Like, she's awful. Right. Yes. Uh, if it was, like, if it was Kayla. Chiefs fans, we all know Kayla. Yeah, we all know Kayla. Stephen A. Smith even knew Kayla. <laughs> really, That's Kayla Steve unfollowed Nate. Brittany on Instagram. Kayla did unfollow Brittany and, and Patrick Mahomes on, on Instagram. Mm-hmm. really yes like this like last week after after the jets game where Brittany was in the box with tra- with ta- uh, well, and taylor, taylor Swift. and Brittany went to a girls dinner with taylor um on friday night in new york whoa girl dinner <laughs> girl dinner yeah they just all ate a bunch of like popcorn and cheez it's <laughs> well yeah. like a fancy bar like, it was blake lively one of taylor's backup Dance singers. Singers, yep. Uh, I saw that. Blake Wilson's sister, Brittany, one of the other wives or girlfriends of another player, I couldn't remember who. And then one of Taylor's like really close friends from like childhood. Interesting. Interesting. But yeah. Quite the circle. And then they were in the suite together. And then Kayla unfollowed them. And everyone's like, no one hates how much attention Taylor Swift is getting more than Brittany at Mahomes. Oh, and I need this podcast to pop off so you can date somebody famous so that, like, me and Tina can hang out with famous people. Okay. I have really bad news for you. I am currently in a relationship. I said Owen, but also if you oh, could do that, too, okay. that would be I awesome. you talking to me. No, if you could do that, too, I think that can only help the podcast if you start dating somebody <laughs> famous. Okay, so you hate Nate. Got it. I'll tell him. No, I, Nate could become famous. I'm not against Nate becoming famous. What's he going to become famous for? Uh, you know, he's got a good vibe. A good vibe? Yeah. That you could, that goes crazy on TikTok sometimes. And sometimes YouTube. people just latch on to guys with good vibes on TikTok. He does have good vibes. Yeah, I mean, c- cut a board, you know? What? What? You don't know what the, you don't know about the Cut a board is that what you No, you does Sawyer know about cut a board? No. Ah, uh, never no, mind. I've never heard of that in my life. Search C U Y space D E Y space B O A R D. Oh yeah, I'm gonna do that for sure when this show's over. Cut yeah, it I'm on it right now. Actually, the guy. yeah, I'm. Uh, you'll you'll recognize the guy. Put that shit on, old cracker, dude. <laughs> That's my favorite vibe on stale cracker. Stale cracker. That's my oh, favorite vibe. The guy who does the like cra- the crawfish boils. Yes. Yep. Shrimp boil. Hot. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. All right. Uh, I think that's about it. Just I wanted to get the I want to make sure that we're is she okay? Well, when does her when does her uh, international tour begin? I believe at the at the the big top of the year. I think she's taking the holidays off, and then she goes somewhere, and then she's in Tokyo on my birthday. On your birthday, bitch. <laughs> well, the day after my birthday. Our birthday. Oh Our God, birthday. We're adults, can we have something to ourselves? Jesus, there's nothing sacred. <laughs> Actually, if I could move my birthday back a week, then that would be great because it could be on the Super Bowl again. Until they add another that. week in the next four years. Fuck it. If they had a week 18, holy shit. They're certainly going to add a week 18 at some point. I just I want to let you know now. Yeah, but you live a pretty hard life. But, well, and, oh, Travis Kelsey's mom was also on an interview this week. And I think it was Good Morning America. Yes, she was. Rock and they cookies. asked her about Taylor, and she was just like, she's nice. Like, essentially, she was like, I, I'm kind of over talking about this. Like, we're not here to talk about that. Mm-hmm. And everyone's like, Travis Kelsey's mom snit, like, snubs Taylor Swift. And I was like, no, I think I think both their, their media teams were like, can we fucking chill on this? And then his mom was like, I don't really want to talk about this. And they're like, she hates her. They even talked, to, talked about that in... I think it was a CBS interview or it might have been the Sunday night football interview where they were like, uh, Travis Kelsey, like I, we were talking about, and of course I had to ask him about Taylor Swift and he just, 
he was kind of mum about it. Like he was just saying that it's going good. And it's like, yeah, I think they're all, they, they did the launch and now they're like, okay, now we would like to have a relationship like every other famous person. We don't need to make a spectacle of this anymore. It is a spectacle sort of. And when she's in the box, they'll show her in the box, but she won't be in the box every week because they are busy people. They expect paparazzi. Was it Friday? What? Getting my hair. Quit. Talking uh, to the chat. Well, so someone saw him at a gas station on his birthday, and he was buying uh, Dutch. Dutches. Yeah, I saw that. I did see that. And I'm like, I didn't know people bought Dutches not to smoke weed, but like. Oh, he's definitely he smoking, smoking weed. weed. I don't know. If you're, are you allowed to smoke weed in the NFL? Yes, you're. You're allowed to do that now. Yeah. They got real chill about it. Is he still rolling his own? Do you think he's going to the dispensary buying weed? And then rolling his own. I don't think he's going to the dispensary and buying weed. He certainly has somebody to deliver that for him. But yeah, he but might he, be rolling he his own. He has someone to roll him, to get him a, a Dutch and roll it for him. Uh, maybe there's a nostalgia factor to it. It's also possible that he's like... There's people who make still make French dip coffee, man. Bro, bro, could you imagine Taylor Swift pulling up to his house? He's like, hang on, I'll roll up really quick. And like pulls out like, you know... What did we use in high school? Like CD cases? Or he's like, watch this. We. I don't think it's impossible for him to be literally making like uh, his own like cigars or cigarettes either. Like one of those weird rich people. No, you don't. As somebody who had a dad who made his own cigarettes, you don't go buy Dutches to make your own cigarettes. Is that no. just like specifically if you're, if you for weed then, you'd say? Dutch, yes. you just keep the shit in the Dutch. Yeah. Yeah. The Dutch is already a, a tobacco product. Oh. Okay. It's, a, it's a cigarello, I think. Yeah, it's a cigarello, like a black and mild or oh, a swisher okay. sweet or something. I thought it, I thought it was Sorry, papers. I'm not going to talk about crack like Dad did on your podcast. Yeah, right. That was crazy. I thought it was but, paper. Yeah, no. It was, no, those are, it's, some people take the, the all the things out of the swisher and then fill that with weed, and then roll it, and then put it oh, back in. Okay. When if yeah, but no one not in high school is using a swisher to roll a, a blunt. Yeah, that's true. Huh, just shows you my Maybe tobacco your slash weird weed Johnson knowledge. County white friends, Owen, but no real person does that. <laughs> I don't, dude. I don't know. Especially now that you can just go buy them at the dispensary nowadays. You don't even have to roll okay. them if you don't. My want. white friends that smoke don't roll. They just smoke out of a bong or a pipe. So yeah, that's yeah. Most people nowadays. Much more sustainable. It is. That's fair. Um. Okay. Give me an edible and I'm good to go. See, I don't like edibles. One, I don't smoke weed or do any of the weed anymore because I just get anxious about it. But two, I don't like edibles because edibles is a lot of guess and check. <laughs> uh, well, 10 milligrams. And they eat it and you're like, oh, I need more. And you're like, whoa, I did not need more. You're like, oh, this is way too fucking much. There's a no, lot of guess and check. They gave me a 25 instead of a 10 on accident. And I, I literally, like, took the dog out the next morning and, like, saw a van and I, like, turned around. I said, he was like, you're back from walking the da- dogs fast. I said, we were going to get kidnapped. I think I'm still high. He was like, you're definitely still high. Nice. All right. Um, well, I think that's it, Sawyer. Okay. I'm going to eat my dinner now. Girl dinner. What's for girl dinner? I made nacho fries with homemade guacamole. Ooh, Ooh. nacho fries, homemade guacamole. Yes, because I just got back from class. Ooh, nice. All right. Well, thank you, Sor. We appreciate it. We'll see you uh, hopefully see you next, week. next week. Amazing. Honestly, Talk just plan on calling me at like 930 if I don't call you. Okay, that's fine. My class gets done at 845. Yeah. Yeah, like get yourself some dinner, call us, and then. Yeah. Perfect. Sounds good. Perfect. See ya. Adios. Adios. Bye. Bye. Truman, I just uh, remembered oh. to tell you this. Nice fucking hoodie, man. Dude, you like this? You like that? I'm still not I'll, big I'll on, the, on the it. Whaler logo. <laughs> The uh, the actual Islander himself. I'm not as big on it as you are, but the the hoodie colors is clean. Yes. Yeah, that dark. Are clean, excuse me. Yeah, it's that dark. It's a uh, first Islander game. When is it, Owen? It's coming up soon. I know that. But I know we have like two more games of preseason. One more game of preseason. No more games of preseason. Preseason's over. When is it the first game? I don't know. Saturday. This Saturday? Yep. Fuck. What are you doing on Saturday? Having a part, I'm going to a party. Me too. Not that party. Are we going to different parties? Yeah. Uh, How dare you? First, we're going to Oktoberfest. Oh. You know, you've been to Oktoberfest. No, I haven't. Been yes, you have. I have not. Remember on the farm with the games? Remember when we slept in the oh, car? Oh, the GBA one. Yes. Yeah. My oh, former. they invited you back? 
Nice. Yeah, no, I'm still friends with all of them. I'm cool. You know, I'm Hopefully cool. it won't be as cold as that time that you and I had to sleep in your car. That was fucking awful. I requested sleeping in the house this year, and I'm hoping I have enough seniority at this point. Dude, ima- dude, imagine the, how cold those people were that had tents. Honestly, I'm going to ask Tina if I can take her car because she has the CRV, and, and that's easier to lay down in the back and use an actual fucking blanket and shit. That was that was tough. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. I honestly yeah. thought it was going to be worse. But we were so tired from doing all the drinking and games that we felt quite sleep. Yes, it's also hard to fucking sleep in a car. True. Yeah, I'm going to a costume party. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I, I got invited. Did that I party. tell you I'm uh, duoing with Lane? Oh, is he being a Mortal Kombat character also? Yes, indeed. That's very funny. Okay. Uh, I told oh. him I'm doing this. I was like, hey, do you want to duo with me? And he's like, yes. All right. All right. All right. All right. Let's keep it moving. Let's keep oh, it moving and grooving so we don't have an hour and a half episode. Listen, it's going to be an hour and a half anyways. You guys listen to the You're episodes. Welcome. You fucking know what Lucky happens. you guys. All right. All these overreactions because I forgot to <laughs> ask people. <laughs> all these overreactions are from Chase. Home okay. run Chase. Fan of the show. Remember, fan of the Bengals. Al- you can also invent overreactions too. But right also now. a reasonable fan of the Bengals and also understanding Ooh, I got the Chiefs. Over, here, I got an overreaction for you right now. That's just for you. I can just okay. start us off. All right. The Broncos trade for Russell Wilson and the ensuing picks that went with it was a worse trade than trading away DeAndre Hopkins for uh, David Johnson. Absolutely. That's correct. Because they traded away uh, like three first-round picks. Or something like that. Maybe not three. Yeah, I'll look up the exact details while you go through what you're talking about. They traded away, away multiple first round picks and like a second round pick. And those first round picks, because Russell Wilson has been bad, were like top five picks, which is crazy. And I think I think they still have another one this year. Like I still I still I think they still don't have a quarterback this year, or a first round pick this year. Okay. So here is the trade Russell Wilson trade details. Yep. Um, Broncos received Russell Wilson and twenty. Oh my lord, the fuck the news and the ads just coming up. Uh, Russell Wilson and twenty twenty two fourth round pick, which the Broncos turned into defensive end uh, Ioma Uwazurike. That's a hell of a name. Good try. Um, and then this Seahawks Seahawks received Drew Lock. Um. Uh, Noah Fant, Shelby Harris, 2022 first round pick, 2022 second round pick, 2022 fifth round pick, 2023 first round pick, and 2023 second round pick. Man, that's bad. I still can't believe they gave away Shelby Harris. That was the weirdest part of that whole deal. Yep. Yeah. So. So they still don't have a pick this year. No. God damn. Yeah. No. That's easily. That's easily a worse trade. Well, they have a 2024 first round pick. They do have a 2024 first round I pick. I believe, yes. All right, hold on, I got to watch the. Hold on, let me check the Monday Night Football score real quick. They're on commercial, so somebody just scored or punted. Yeah, so. Uh, oh, it was fourth and one. Did they t- Did they overturn? Did they turn the What's ball the over? What's the score, by the way? Oh, no, they called a timeout. What's oh, the score? Oh, the oh it's the two minute warning. Uh, 17 13. Raiders are still right? Yep. Raiders yeah. about to kick a field goal. Uh, one of my. It's actually a long field goal. Hold on, wait a minute. Let me see how long this field goal is. Is it over sixty? Mm, no, but it is over fifty. It's fifty-two yarder, which is five points. I think we're in trouble, unless. Oh my god, he fucking missed it. Oh no. We're losing to Hurricane Dick again. <sighs> He's I'm so sick. good. That makes me sick. Well, and, and that's on, very funny. On the and now side, the Raiders that means can lose I win the game. In my work league. God, Jimmy Garoppolo is a beautiful man. Um, <laughs> that's fair. Okay. All right. Overreactions with the overreactor is brought to you by uh, you. If you guys want to sponsor it next time, just let us know. Could be sure. you. Could be you. <laughs> we'll promote anything. Well, within reason. All right. First one. Justin Fields just saved his starting job for next season after putting a pounding on the commanders. I don't think that's an overreaction, actually. I think... It, He's still, quote, developing. And in order for the front office to justify not going and getting another quarterback, they need to see stuff like that. I think that could be 
end up being a decent take. I think this game and last game have done a lot. I think if this was his first game, I think we would have been skeptical, but the fact that it's his second game doing pretty well is helpful. But I still think, you know, they've got 12 more games this year. I think if Justin Fields throws for under 150 in the next 12 games, I think he's lost his job. Yeah. I think he has righted the ship somewhat, and that will help him keep his job. But I do not think this job, this game specifically, they're like, oh, yeah, he's back in it. But if you do look at Justin Fields' stats, he's like 12th in quarterback rating, like third in touchdowns. Well, yeah, it's hard to lose quarterback rating when you don't throw the ball. He's still like third in touchdowns and like fourth in yards. He's got yeah. good stats, well, surprisingly. Yeah, yeah sure. And, but it's well, a lot of garbage time stats. Yeah, he's, and the, he's the Carson Palmer, where Carson Palmer was like an amazing fantasy quarterback that last year he was with the Raiders because they were yeah. bad. So or like early so much Kirk, garbage or like time. early Kirk Cousins. Yeah. Um, But, yeah, I mean, I think the NFL has figured out how to stop the run-only quarterback. Yep. And, like, you know, see the Ravens. The Ravens, you know, have arguably the most athletic quarterback – Probably the most athletic quarterback in the whole league, Lamar Jackson. I think Justin Fields is more athletic than than Lamar Jackson. And Anthony Richardson is probably more athletic now, too. Sure. But, okay. The, but the, I, I get where you're But going. the blueprint of that style of quarterback, where they're a threat to run, I think teams have figured out how to scheme around that. Okay. And in Lamar Jackson's case, his wide receivers aren't really helping him out at all. But No, Lamar Jackson threw some beautiful passes yeah, this weekend. I, I, all I, I, I saw the crazy. I saw the super cut. That, that was, is terrible. As much as I love clowning Lamar – Damn, dude, that sucks. I was gonna text him and be like Lamar B, Lamar B, but no, that's, <laughs> that's not that. Yeah. You can't climb for that this time. You can say Lamar B when he fumbles. That's uh, that's a Lamar B moment. All right, let's go to the next one. Jaguars got an unfair advantage playing back to back games in London, which is why they beat the home team, the home team Bills. I don't think that's ridiculous, but I still think the Bills should be winning that game. I think that is uh, true. I honestly, me, and my dad, uh, Steen versus Machine. Hey, free plug. Uh, we actually talked about that on the show where I said – where he took the Bills minus five and a half, and I was like, that makes sense. The Bills are b- the better team. They should win that game. But Jacksonville stayed the whole week in London, and we talk a lot about West Coast teams going to the East Coast, and that's a three-hour difference, if they're playing, but they're playing in that noon game and how bad West Coast teams do. Uh, imagine if you're going eight hours or five – you know, six, it's like a six-hour flight from the East Coast to London. From, like, New York to London, it's like six – or five and a half. No, that's just time zone, dude. Yeah. That's well, time difference. Flight is like eight, ten. Yeah. From, from No, no, no. The flight is like five and a half from New York. Oh, wait. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. From Because I our friends just flew to Germany, and it was like eight from Kansas City. I think it was a direct flight to Germany. Yeah. Uh, but don't quote me on that either. You know, I, no, that, that, that sounds right. That sounds right, actually. So. It's time different from Central. Five and a half six. flight is a long time, but – the time difference of six hours or whatever. Yeah, I don't know. And if though. you, but if you give your whole body a whole week to get acclimated to it, it's totally different. But I, you know, I also don't think they're flying out on like a, a Friday night and only staying Saturday. Are they? Wouldn't they fly out earlier in practice because of that reason? No matter what, the Jags will have an extra week on them at least. I, but after a couple, after two days, I don't think it matters. I think it does matter. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just. I it's still think the Bills should have taken care of business like they did with the Dolphins. So. Yes, absolutely. I do agree with you. But, no. Uh, Joe Burrow and the Bengals are fixed. That's the next one. That's an overreaction. I don't know if they're fixed yet, man. I'm, I've am i got to see a little bit more. i got to see not the Browns. The Cardinals. Oh, it was the Cardinals? Holy shit, you're right. Yes. That is, again, we anticipate them to be a bad team. Just because the Cardinals have played some teams close. Sorry, wasn't the Browns their other win? Uh, no, the other one was like the, no, sorry. They got beat by the Titans. Crazy. Maybe you're right. I'm about to be clowned again. I don't think you're going to be clowned again, but I remember, I, I think it might be like the Panthers. Oh no. They beat the Rams. They beat the Rams? 19 to 16. Oh yeah. On Monday night in Cincy. Yeah, so and that was a shit fest too. Yeah. 34, yeah. 20. Cardinals. So. No, I don't believe in them for the same reason I don't believe in uh whoa, the same reason we don't believe in the Dolphins, right? Yes. I believe in the Dolphins more than I believe in the Bengals, and I believe in the Bills more than I believe in the Bengals. I believe the Chiefs more than I believe in the Bengals, and I honestly I believe in the Ravens more when their guys aren't dropping than I do. That's why I don't believe in the Ravens though, because 
the Ravens just find ways to lose. But the Ravens and the Steelers are both three and two. And the Bengals are two and three. So you guys are lucky that the Steelers have three wins is insane. That the AFC North is still cannibalizing itself. But at the same time, the Bengals still have to play the Steelers one more time, the Ravens one more time, and the Mm -hmm. Browns twice. And neither of those games. No, they've already played the Browns. Did they play the Browns? The Browns beat them week one, 24 to three. Oh, I thought that was the Steelers. No. So they haven't played the Steelers. They have not played the Steelers yet. They have not played the Steelers, but they have played the Ravens. So teams... That this was looking bleak for Bengals fans, in my opinion. This is their next five games, Truman. I don't think anyone has a tougher schedule over the next five games. Okay. They have they go. Uh, they have. Hold on. Let me make sure I'm reading this right. Okay. Yes. Okay. So bottom means home team. Okay. They host the Seahawks. Yes. Then they go on the road to the 49ers. Okay. Then they host Seahawks off of bye week, by the way. Then they host the Bills. Wait, on the road to the 49ers? Jesus. So they play they're playing the NFC West, which is not yeah. an easy pull. So they host the Seahawks, go on the road to the 49ers, then they host the Bills, then they host the Texans, and then they go on the road to the Ravens. Oh. That is a tough five game stretch. That's the next five games. When's their bye week? Is the bye week somewhere in the middle there? Um their bye week. Yeah, I think they have a late one. Yeah, you might be right. I don't know where their bye week is. I can't. It's not popping out to me on my on my screen here. Me. Seven days, six days, eight days, but that's a Thursday game. Um, wait, that's a Thursday game. This is a Thursday game. So the ten days, that's normal. Uh, fuck? no, their their bye week is after the Seahawks game. You started looking too late. Seahawks. Oh 10, yes, 15, there we go. Twelve days. Yes. So. Okay, so they get the Niners off. They go to the Niners off a bye week, but dude, Niners built Niners then Wait, the, going the, to San Francisco, then hosting the Bills, then hosting the Texans, then going to the Ravens, then hosting the Steelers, then going to the Jags. Is the 29th of Thursday? That is a brutal. They've got a brutal six game, seven game stretch. I know you talk about that five game stretch, but it doesn't get any easier when the Steelers visit you and then you go to the Jags. Yeah, that's pretty tough. Uh, if they beat the Seahawks this weekend. I will feel better about their chances. I will feel better about them, but I still will. We will know a lot more after they get a bye week and then get to face the Niners. That will be tough. And then they get to face the Bills, which is really the argument. That game will depend. That will start. That will determine who is going to challenge the Chiefs for the one seed. Yeah, that'll start, you know, really shaping the playoff race. Well, but also that comes down to what. Uh, also, the Raiders are going to win. Yes. And the under is going to catch. Um, so, to, to further our point that we're not sure if the Bengals are fixed, um, th- we also said that as Chiefs fans after the, the Chiefs obliterated the Bears. And then the p- same problems that we were talking about in the previous week um, showed up again this week. Yeah, Chiefs, like. Chiefs haven't beat a good team yet, really, either. Not really. But they did beat the Vikings, which I say is better than any win that the Bengals have yet. I think the Bang I think the Vikings I know the Vikings are one and four and so are the Cardinals but the Vikings are have lost every game by one score. There yeah it, you know there's levels to it. There's levels. Yes. Okay. Everyone everyone watching would probably agree that the Vikings are better than But the we're Bengals. homers and we of course. And we, I mean we are definitely biased for sure. <laughs> Decade. I don't. I've been muted. Sorry. Oh my god, how long have I been muted? Not I've been touching. Long. I've been touching the mic. So hopefully, hopefully not too long. So that would really suck if it was long. Fuck. I was talking <laughs> for a long time too. Let's hope it's not for a long time. I honestly, I've just been. I've been doing a lot with the mic. Well, mm-hmm. since I've sat up, so it hasn't been. Well, for too I've long. been checking the audio meter when I've been talking. I have n- been a little bit. So okay. Let's I apologize there's not for too much muted audio. It'll be <laughs> weird audio, but it should be okay. I talk loud enough that even. I tried to not be talk. Wall it could out. be bad. It could be bad. <laughs> Fuck. I hope it's not too If you guys hear that and you're like, what was going on? Uh, just go watch the YouTube video and kind of <laughs> just watch my mouth move and figure out what I was saying. Uh, essentially, the Bengals aren't good, but they could be good, but the Chiefs don't have that much of a claim to be better than them um, I other still, than that they're beating the bad teams. I still don't like talking about how good teams are right okay. now. It's only week six. Sorry. And the next lead-in was that even if Cowboys fans don't know it or 
or, or want to pretend like it's not true there. 49ers child and will be for the remainder of the decade. That, I think, is an actual th- – I think that the – it's not even that the Cowboys are somebody's child. I And the, the 49ers are good right now, but I think they could be bad in the future if things fall apart wrong. I don't think Dallas is ever going to compete in their current state. I don't think Mike McCarthy and, and Dak Prescott will ever get you to a Super Bowl. Ever. They're and you deep. can put me on and you, you can write me down. I don't think Dak Prescott on the on the he's just they've just kind of they're like a couple that's been together for too long. And you know, like everybody knows that it's, it's not a good eventually. relationship and that they're not having fun and they're not happy and they never see each other smile, except for like in weird like moments where everybody smiles. And you're like, oh. and but you can tell they're just both like too. I guess like uh, I, I they just they're too uh oh my gosh I almost had it. it starts with a C close no it just means for like settling oh codependent codependent is complacent they're both complacent. complacent in what they're doing and I think I think that's exactly where the Cowboys are I think everybody knows that neither of those t- people are going to be anything unless they break up with each other and 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 I don't think Mike McCarthy will ever do anything and I think Dak Prescott probably also won't do anything but i think they can do better things than they're doing with each other right now and i don't think they're ever going to a super bowl like this and i don't think they're ever going to actually compete for anything worthwhile like this does that make sense especially if trevon Diggs is out yeah i I just think you know we're we're just finding out really where trevon Diggs is uh important set Right, because the Cowboys were cooking the first couple weeks of the year. Right, but then Trevon Diggs goes out, and all of a sudden the wheels kind of fall off. Well, and that's where the Logan—that's the Logan comment that I was going to say. He had a hot take that the Cowboys will never get anywhere unless they do a full teardown. And I, I think, think the teardown uh, is just um, no, but I agree with you. I think the teardown is mainly at the quarterback and scheme level. Yes, I think you have to get a new coach and a new quarterback. I, I think you, I, I think it's hard for Dallas fans to argue that what's happening is working. This isn't working. Well, I think Truman. I think the, where Cowboys are at right now is where the Chiefs were with Alex Smith. Yeah, is Dak Prescott an NFL caliber starter? I Absolutely. think they were even further along with Alex Smith, and and I think they played better teams closer than the Dallas Cowboys play with Dak. Prescott. It's possible, but it w- we would say that Dak Prescott is is not bad enough to not be an NFL starter. Yep. He's an NFL starter. Yep. But you know, divisional round comes up. You have a tricky matchup against a lower seed or, you know, a hopeful matchup against a higher seed. Mm-hmm. You're not going into that super confident that this guy is going to make the miracle play. Yep. Kind of like, you know, that, that AFC championship game that we watched at your house yep. with uh, Chiefs versus uh, uh, Patriots. You know, we're like, okay, Alex Smith, you know, he's good. But, you know, final drive comes up. Chiefs have a chance to go tie it. And we're like, I just don't know if he's. He's not going to do this. Yeah. I yeah, don't know if he's, he's gonna, not that guy. Right. I don't think they went to the AFC championship that game. A year. Oh, you're right. Sorry, that was the divisional versus yeah. the Pats, though. In New England, mm-hmm. it, like the Gronk, like oh, it like bounced off of somebody's hands and then into Gronk's hands. And yeah, that he was got the first down. That sucked. Yeah, it was that game. Because we were watching that with our uh, ex friend. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> next take: Bryce Young is the worst quarterback of the 2023 draft class that draft class that has played multiple games. I still think the Panthers are really bad. I think so. But, but I think Bryce Young has thrown – he's looked worse than he did at Alabama. Sure. for I, I mean, 100%. But I, I don't think we can evaluate the draft class quite yet, mm-hmm. especially with Anthony Richardson being out now. Fair enough. I think that the situation in Indianapolis was more tailor-made for a quarterback than – Carolina's just been in shambles ever since Cam Newton left. Yes. But I, I think as up to this point, I think you are – I think he's correct that Bryce Young has been the worst. Well, so yes. Up to this point right now, he has not been – well – DJ I mean, Stroud. What's his face still got Anthony drafted Richardson. to the Titans? But he hasn't played multiple games. He hasn't played any games. Oh, sorry. Was that this is, did he say has that has played, played multiple, multiple games? games? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. That has played multiple games? Yes, you're correct. Yes. Is there another quarterback? I feel like there's another quarterback that we're missing. Uh, the Titans guy is the one that I'm thinking of. Is that the only other one? Yeah. So is those three in the first four picks, and then it was Will Levis later on? That's what I'm thinking. Sorry. Yeah, I couldn't remember Will Levis' name. Yeah. I think, I think right. those are the main ones that everyone is focusing on. Fair enough. Uh, Bryce Young. Oh, sorry. Next one. Sean Payton was a product of Drew Brees, and Bill Jel- Belichick was a product of Tom Brady. Yes, and then no. Um, I think so the Patriots' offense is really bad right now. I think, yes. So, Sean, uh, 
Sean Payton was absolutely a Drew Brees major, yes. Um, merchant. Yes, Drew Brees made that offense. You, we can tell because Russell Wilson is – I mean, he, he was good at one point. I think it doesn't really help him that Russell Wilson's kind of been washed up. But the, the offense for the Broncos has not been doing well. Bill well, Belichick needs a quarterback that can make a throw. Mac Jones cannot make a throw. Neither can Bailey Zappi. That they can't make the, sim- the right simple now. throws that – like the throw the flat, the ones that the running backs open the flat. We know Tom Brady is never, ever missing that with his eyes closed. Ironically, whoever I, I think the person that would be getting it done right now, 2019 Jimmy Garoppolo, would be getting it done in New England right now. Yes, uh, all those quarterbacks that went uh, that went on to go somewhere else. Um, uh, yeah, all, everyone who got a win while Tom Brady was out in that four game suspension would be doing better. I think Sean Payton. What's his name? Is sort of the B went to the Colts. Um, Say it again. Uh, the last name starts with a B. He went to the Colts. He's a rookie quarterback? He wasn't a rookie. Well, I guess he was at that time. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to look it up. Matt Ryan? No. <sighs> Sorry. I kind of – I'm kind of spaced. Uh, I, I was thinking about – here's what I will say. Sean Payton. I don't know why. I can't the thing about Sean Payton being so a Drew Brees Coleman. merchant Flo- is that you felt it in your bones. Drew Brees was a Hall of Fame quarterback. Drew Brees, you felt, should have won more than one Super Bowl. You saw how good Drew Brees was. Yes. And what did he do? He consistently underperformed. They consistently choked in the playoffs. And consistently had no defense at all. And now, maybe you're seeing the reason. It's because Sean Payton isn't very good. And maybe that's the reason. Although they should have gone to the Super Bowl when the Rams went, you know, and had the mega travesty. Right. Which but sucks. If everything doesn't go right for the Saints, they don't go. But when you have a quarterback like Drew Brees, you should be able to go no matter what. You should be able to compete to go every year. Yeah, you should and be. they only made that AMC championship game like that one time. Yeah. Other than the other time that they won it and then won the Super Bowl. I got the name of that quarterback, by the way. Yes. Jacoby Brissett. Oh, yeah. Sorry that but I But he didn't go as a rookie. Yeah, no, sorry. But That's where you threw me off. I was going to – I was thinking – in rookie. my head, I was thinking, like – I was thinking Tyrod Taylor, which then leads me to Jacoby Brissett. Well, Jimmy I, Garoppolo wasn't a rookie, though, when he won some of those games. I know, but I'm just – That's kind of what I was going, though. Okay. I was focusing on the quarterbacks during Tom Brady's suspension who all won games. Because was that 2019? Of, that wasn't 2019. I don't know. I don't know what. Oh, it was 2019 because he won that Super Bowl and then all the Barstool guys were like, nah, he had to hand him the trophy. It was 2018. Yeah. But yes, I agree with you. Whatever. Yeah. That's right. Yes. The start of the year 2019 was the 2018 2019 season. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, whatever. Um, um, final take. Bill Belichick can win with anybody, but he can't win. Uh, he can't win with janitors like Mac Jones. He can't win with anybody, but he can win with plenty of people. He's still a fine coach, and this is probably his last year, which is unfortunate. He'll probably retire for this. I don't think he wants to do another rebuild. Yeah, not if he's getting smacked around like this. Like his team, his team hasn't been scoring anything. Then they get blanked this week. Yep, thirty four zero. I think it was or thirty one. Thirty four zero. That uh, that hit on that hit on the under, and I was like, "Fuck, the Saints might hit on their own," and they didn't. Luckily, yeah. Uh, final one. There's no true number one QB this year, and there won't be for the remainder of the season. What do you mean? I'm confused. What that means? That there won't be a QB. Like, one. Like, there won't be a clear best quarterback in the league for oh, the whole year. Unless Mahomes figures it out, then no. I think if Travis Kelsey stays healthy, I think Mahomes will. I think you'll be like. Yeah, he's the best. It's I honestly what it's setting up to be so far. Brock Purdy MVP. Hell no. <laughs> Brock Purdy, it'll be like a it'll be like when Alex Smith was nine and zero with the Chiefs, and people are like, "You got to be talking about Alex Smith for the MVP race." It's like, do I? Do I have to be talking about Alex Smith for the MVP race? And then they lost and fell apart, and that was fine. Then we finish that season ten of ten and six. Yeah, started out 9-0, finished 10-6. and oh, terrible. Won the playoff game. Yes, 30-0 against the Texans. Oh, or yeah. no, no, no. No, no, no. That was not the year they won the playoff game. Because the year they won the playoff game, they started out 1-5 and five and then won 10 in a row oh, and yeah. then beat the Texans. I think... The mega streak. No, team. you know what year that was? Was that the Andrew Luck game? No. That was... The Marcus Mariota pass year? Wait. No, it was Andy Reid's first year. That was the year we didn't make the playoff? That was the ni- No, that was the 9-0... Year that they then fell apart. Who did we lose to then? Was that was that, was that the Ravens these, game? Was that the Steelers? We didn't score a touchdown and still beat you. Uh, not a hold on Eric Fisher game. 
God, so that would have been what, 2013 Chiefs? Hold on, let me look it up. Because, yeah, that's the 2013 draft uh, class. Then where that is the 2014, the start of year 2014. That is the Andrew Luck year. Yes. Uh, lost the wild. Oh. Yeah. Is that the Andrew Luck year, right? Yeah, it is the Andrew Luck year. <sighs> it sucks because no matter what, when I'm watching a clutch plays, like, here are some awesome clutch plays in the NFL, that plays in there. Yep. Yep. It God, was an sucks. incredible play. Um. Okay. That was when you were still talking about Andy Reid clock management, he, which he's figured out in the past couple seasons how to put together a drive to sh- shave off time. He's done better. He's still not perfect at it, but he's done better. He's better, yes. Sure. He doesn't lose every game that requires clock management now. Like but he, he's still... Like I'm sure he didn't lose every game that required clock management. It, it sure helps, felt like it. It helps that he has the best quarterback, uh, of the most talented quarterback of all time playing with him. That's true. It does the, help. Probably the best quarterback peak we've ever seen. I will say that's what I'm going to say. Sure. I'm willing to I say agree at with this you. point. Okay. Uh, I think that's the last take. Oh, wait, was that the last thing? What was it? True. Number one quarterback. Oh, what I'm saying is this is setting up to be the best, uh, chance for a non quarterback to have an MVP season. Tyree kill is setting up very well. Christian McCaffrey is setting up very well. Justin Jefferson is setting up very well. If one of them breaks the yardage records this year and the, and the quarterbacks can't figure it out where Josh Allen is, is on his roller coaster and Mahomes doesn't have us doesn't have Travis Kelsey every single moment and he's going up and down. Joe Burrow continues to have his calf problems and Jamar Chase gets a little disgruntled or T. Higgins is hurt for a long time. This is a there's a chance that this could keep on going up and down. Jalen Hurts also hasn't been as rock st- or as rock steady as he was uh, before either. He's been fine, but he hasn't been incredible. So a couple things to think about there. All right, let's finish this up. NFC South team of the week. Got to be the Saints, right? Yeah, got to be. Mega stomp. Unless the Bucks win? Or Bucks? No, Bucks are off. Bucks were off. Falcons. The week five bye. So Falcons won against the against the, the AFC South, which was kind of fun. Yeah, we're no, we're not doing that one because they ruined my parlay. <laughs> oh, that's fair. Uh, what was the other one? Fanders also ruined my parlay. Who's also in the South? The, the, oh, the Panthers, Panthers. And they got fucking molly whopped. Yeah, no shit. Oh, and who's the best team in the NFL after week five? <sighs> Has to be the 49ers. Has to be. I'm sorry. That team looked great against Dallas, although they've looked great again. Again, it's one of those where there's truly not any great teams, but they beat probably the third or fourth best team in the NFC. They're still looking good. And they beat the hell out of them. We still uh, need um, to see the Niners against a team that, like, we need Niners, to see. Niners Eagles is on a crash course for each other. Oh, gosh. That's going to be an awesome game. That is going to be an incredible game, yeah. That is a crash course. We're, it's the rematch that we all deserve. And that game will be, I want to get the week right. I wonder if we'll do this again where we're like, oh, they play them next week. <laughs> no. That would be funny. Uh, Niners, Eagles. Oh, man. like That's like a great week for it to be. 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13. Yeah, week 13. That's a great week for that game to be. That's perfect. December 3rd. That's a classic time. That's pretty good. Very excited for that. Okay. Uh, Yeah, I think 49ers are the best team in the NFL. I think that's hard to debate at this point. Uh, They just haven't played many close games. The Eagles have played closer games than the Niners, and even then, I don't think so. Uh, Review our week five picks. Oh, and me and you tied this week. We're both 10 and 7. Hey! Wow, dude, we're actually killing it. We haven't had a week. You're killing it. I've had some bad weeks. We (sighs) But not awful weeks, but I've had some bad weeks. It's crazy. Uh, Yeah, I am killing it. I haven't had a week where I had more wrong picks than right picks yet. That's fair. Jeez, my pre—I should have just bet on my preseason picks. Holy fuck! Yeah. Uh, we uh, how the machine do this week versus uh, St- then Steen versus machine? How did the machine do the versus the machine? Steen, I'm not sure how my dad did actually. Hold on, let me look. <laughs> actually, I don't know. Let me check. How the machine do on the in the meantime? The machine. I had Tennessee and Indianapolis under 43 and a half, cashed. Mm. I had New York Giants Miami over 47 and a half. Did not cash. That that one was a heartbreaker, I think. Wait, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Because that line moved. I Oof. 47. Oh. It's 47. Total points? Yes. Brutal. Machine machine dialing it in. Very close. Yes. Uh, in Miami, minus 12 and a half. Cashed. Cash. New Orleans, New England, under 39 and a half. Cash. Cash. Green Bay, Las Vegas, under 44 and a half. Cash. Cash. 
For those keeping track at home, that means the machine, Onstein versus machine, the last two weeks, nine and one. Five and zero oh last week, four and one this last. Uh, nine, five and zero oh two weeks ago, four that's, and one last week. That's sick. By the way, tune into Steen versus Machine Saturday yes. morning. Steen Bill, Bills minus five and a half did not cash. Uh, New Orleans New England under thirty nine and a half cashed. Ravens minus four did not cash. Texans money line plus one fourteen. I bet this on my own actually. Also, uh, Machine had this as a lower pick, not in my top five picks. Uh, money Texans money line plus one fourteen did not cash. I had the Chiefs minus three and a half, but they had, really they had Green Bay Las Vegas. Uh, my dad also had Green Bay Las Vegas under forty five, and that is a cash. So, uh, he went two and three. I went four and one. That's another positive week overall for Steam vs Machine six and four. Hey, tune in every week, every Saturday. It also gets released on Spotify if you guys are listening. If you guys see those like in between episodes, you're like, what the fuck is that? That's what that is. There you go. Owen five team parlay of the week. How'd that, how'd that last one do? What'd you have? I bet on another Thursday game, and my parlay was dead before the weekend once again. You've got to stop. You've got to stay I'm with not, I'm I, not doing I, this week. Almost on principle, I don't bet on Thursday games because I don't trust them to play out like normal games. Yeah, I think I, that has always been a rule of mine is don't bet on Sunday games, and I really don't love betting on Monday night games, but it's not as bad as a Thursday game. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty pissed about this one. I This is the first time in a long time that I went two and three. Three of my legs lost. I had the Commanders. Oh. Insane collapse against the Bears. What the hell was that? Uh, not insane collapse. Well, not a it collapse was, at all. It was just a, it, it beat down. It was twenty-seven yeah, beat down. three at halftime. Uh, I had the Bills over the Jags. Should have thought about London, I guess. Yep. Uh, Texans. They were never in the lead. Texans like collapsed against the Falcons after scoring late. Couldn't hold them with a minute, what, well, thirty minute forty-five left yeah, on the clock. It was uh, Falcons. Texans were up nine-three. At halftime, and then or nine seven at halftime, up a twelve seven going into the fourth quarter, scored. I think they were up nineteen. No no no, sorry. Falcons scored. They were up fourteen twelve. Texans scored to take the lead, and then, and then Falcons, Falcons kick a field goal as the timer expires. Yep. Uh, Saints at plus one hundred five, easiest cash ever. That was a big holy cash. fuck! I should have just bet money on. I that. can't believe the Patriots were favored in that game. Uh, and then I had the Eagles. I um, was surprised that was minus 210. That game was closer than I thought. Um, uh, all other bets, I bet on the Cardinals to beat the Bengals. Uh, betting on the Bengals, and I felt L. I also just bet solo on the Texans because I believed L. Um, I barely missed a parlay with Tottenham. Frustrating. Um, but I hit on another parlay with Tottenham. So, Interesting. W. I lost, I lost money I lost betting on, like, dumb shit. I think overall... I Isaiah, okay. Isaiah Pacheco, touchdown score, though. Easy cash. Um, here's my far... Speaking of e- bets that are easy cash, this week's five-team parlay. All right, I'm ready. I'm done fucking around. No Thursday night game. No Thursday night game. It is time to simply... Oh, actually, I am betting on the Thursday night game. No. No. Listen, try to find five other picks. No. I need this. <sighs> Why? Do you think I'm jinxing Don't it? curse us on Thursday <laughs> night. I'm not cursing us. Jinxes aren't real. It's also real. just not worth it. It's minus 535. Uh, it's minus 550 on MGM. That trash-ass <laughs> app. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it never has the best odds. Sure does, sometimes. No, it, it really doesn't. I, I have an app that compares all of them. I've never seen it where MGM had the best app, had the best one. Though. Don't care. Anyway, uh, I'm betting the Chiefs at minus 550. I'm betting the Vikings over the Bears at minus 155. I can't believe you skipped over a game already. All right. I am uh, betting the 49ers over the Browns. Okay, that was the one. It's in different orders on mine. Yes, same, yes, 49ers over the Browns. Absolutely. I'm betting. I am betting Saints over Texans. Only minus 125. I don't know. The craziest line. I think that's where you lose it. I think the Houston Texans are better than New Orleans Saints. I don't think so. Um, and the craziest line I think is uh, Cowboys minus 130 over the Chargers. I don't. Just I don't believe in the Chargers that much. I guess. Just we sh- we spent so much of this show sh- shitting on Dallas. Yeah, but he's not gonna have two three interception games in a row, surely. Uh, fair enough. Here's where I tell you, I'd I'd spend mine. I'd go Eagles over Jets. Instead. I'm sorry, is this Truman's fight? I'm just I'm <laughs> I, I, I'm telling you what, I'm gonna bet yours. Are you also gonna bet yours? And I'm gonna bet mine. You know what? I'll also bet yours. Okay. Let's have a competing parlay week. All right. Unprecedented. A five dollar, a five dollar on Owen. Owen's five team parlays: the 49ers, the Chiefs, the Vikings, the Saints, and the Cowboys. I want all favorites this time. Yes. First time in a while. Yes. Five dollars on that one. All right. What are we going? All right. I'm doing it. I'm doing. I've been doing college football like this, and I've been fucking killing it. Besides this just, week, just betting TC- mega favorites. No, like I bet enough. I, I bet enough favorites 
to where I get the parlay up to like plus three, 300, and then I bet that. Okay, so what are we doing? Easy first game, Niners over Browns. Easy. That one is easy. That one is free. Okay. Uh, next game, <laughs> Jags over Colts. Okay. I'm, Anthony Richardson is out. I'm actually, yes. And I think Gardner Minshew is I don't know, though, good. dude. The Jags, the Jags can turn back into a pumpkin real quick. Uh, Eagles over Jets. That's freer than free. The fact that the Eagles are only minus six and a half is also insane. That's kind of crazy. Um, that's three picks. Uh huh. I'm gonna come back to one. I think. You gonna you gonna go back to a mega favorite? Uh, Lions over Bucks. Lions over Bucks. Yep. Damn, I gotta spice this up a little bit. I don't have to. I want to. Truman, remember what we talked about? The numbers. Right. It doesn't matter. All that matters is winning. Oh, Bills yeah. over Giants. <laughs> Let's ruin the parlay. You know uh, what I really adds want. Point you know, five. Fuck, you know what I really want to do? What? Oh. Rams over Cardinals. Yeah, you know what? Let's let's both lose. I'm taking Seahawks over Bengals. No, that's losing the parlay. No, nope. it gives me five it gives me better odds than yours. Oh. I'm picking four mega favorites and a team that I just believe is better than Truman. That's off the bye week. Parlay. Off the bye week. Bet it. <sighs> a fiver on that one. Niners, Jags, Eagles, Lions, Seahawks gets you plus 1034 on DraftKings. Damn. Owen, Owen's parlay was plus 824. Dude, it's plus 905 on MGM. That's a, f- that's, that, that's that's a full That's a full five or worse. That's kind of worth five bucks. That's crazy. Again, remember to shop your odds. All right. Oh, and top five chance in sports. Let's oh, go yeah. real quick. I got a good one. Let's bang these out. Uh, you want to go I first? Got, you I'm ready to go, go to bed. I'll go first. Okay. I actually have mine prepared already this time. But then you go this time. Okay. Number five, the tomahawk chop. The tomahawk chop. Enjoy doing it. Um, slight controversy with it, but I've seen uh, Native American groups that are for the tomahawk chop and Native American groups that are against it. So I think it's a morally gray area where it's you decide if you think it's cool, and I think it's cool. I think plenty of teams do it at this point. That it yeah, the matter. Braves do it. Um, the Florida State Seminoles do it. Florida State's a special situation, though. That is a very special situation. Yes, because that's like a they're like really integrated with the the Seminole population. Right, that's that's right where it is. Yeah, right. They, they've got no problems there. Uh, number four, school. That's a good one. School. I think it's fun. Oh fuck! One I one I just remembered. Uh, the Islanders yes chant needs to be on here. I'm replacing the tomahawk chop. the The yes chant is so much cooler than the chop. Yes, yes, yes. That's an awesome one. Uh, number three, Tottenham chant. Uh, it's to the tune of uh, a man after midnight by Abba. It's gimme, gimme, gimme a ginger from Sweden. He came from Juventus and he plays on the wing. It's a whole song about a Tottenham player named Dian Kulisevsky. Okay. And, yeah, that's fucking awesome. I love that one. Uh, number two, the one that I is constantly in my head, is when the Wolverhampton Wanderers, which is known as Wolves in England. I am, that's my their, old roommate's team. The, yes, their pregame, they have a song, and it goes, I am Wolverhampton. And it just, uh, sometimes you hear that. I don't know what the rest of the song is, but I just think about that all the time because fuck, it's sick when the entire stadium is screaming that. Yep. And number one, uh, to the tune of uh, uh, I Want to Dance with Somebody, it's uh, it's about a Tottenham player named Udogi. It's like, oh, I want to dance with Udogi. I want to win the league with Udogi. It's awesome. So, Meh. number five, the yes chant. Number four, Skull. Number three, Ginger from Sweden. Number two, I am Wolverhampton. And number one, Dance with Udogi. Fair enough. All right, here's my here's my quick number five, my t- quick top five. Number five, the tomahawk chop. I enjoy it. Sure. I think it's fun. I think it is easy to. I think honestly, I like that it kind of gets a little. That it's not all ever in time. I kind of think that creates a kind of fun effect. Uh, two or number four, the yes chant. I do like the yes. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. As hockey season is about to start, absolutely. Number three, this is where I go. This is the skull one. Listen, that's cool, and that's cool because that is in sync. Yes, uh, and there's obviously some ones that we're missing that people are gonna fucking get mad at us about. But Whatever. okay, 
Uh, lamest one, uh, the keep pounding for the Panthers. That one's lame. I'll say it. That's weird. Number two, uh, any European soccer singing. I'll say it. <laughs> That's kind of fun. It's awesome, man. I can't wait to go see it in person. And number one, and this is the post that inspired it. Shout out, Ema Caleb. He was complaining oh, yeah. about the home of the Chiefs. And I That's your favorite? I think it's I think it's the funniest one. One, because I think as Americans, I think the people that get upset about it are taking the the national anthem way too seriously. Listen, we're all you should all be slightly proud to live in the you should be a little bit proud to live in this country because it does give you so I believe some of the most freedoms in the world to Both do some liberty. Things. But I don't travel I don't travel enough out of the country, also to be fair. Two, it's just nobody should take themselves that fucking seriously. Who cares if they chant Chiefs at it? And he was complaining that they do it at Chiefs at K State games. Listen, the Chiefs have been the most dominant team in the NFL over the last five years. And they're the closest NFL team to K State. And Jerome Tang just beat the drum at a Chiefs game. Yes, yes. It's the home of the Chiefs. It's hard now to say. Too. It's it's hard to say that you don't think that the Chiefs have any influence over the over the fucking Cats. Yeah, it's silly. And the first K State first round pick in a long time just went to the Chiefs. Yes, home of the Chiefs is fun. It's good fun, and it's also loud. It is loud. And noticeable anywhere it goes on. They did it in Minnesota. It's fucking loud. And it was awesome. People were like, They did it at the Big 12 championship game. Yes. And the fucking comments I see are, Oh, the Chiefs managed to, the Chiefs managed to ruin the national anthem hour, eight hours away from Kansas City. Shut the fuck up, dude. Who cares? Yeah, it doesn't ruin the national people. anthem. It doesn't. It, it just doesn't. You really want to say brave, huh? Yeah, right. Who? I just. I just couldn't care less. I, yeah, you know, and I, I think... And I'm he, a band guy. I, I respect... I play the National Anthem. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful song, whatever. It is fun, though. I just, you know, I understand that your frustration, but, brother, most Cats fans are Chiefs fans, so... Yes. Yep. That's all I got for you. Um, I like it. That's it. Another episode of the books. Thank you for everybody who's been tuning in. We've had really good YouTube viewership the last couple of weeks, mm -hmm. and Thank we you. see you guys. We really do appreciate that. I uh, appreciate the comments. It's just, you know, a couple here or there. But Smash that like button. Smash the subscribe button. Yes. Slap that bell. Hit that follow button. Patreon.com um, slash home disaster. Hey, if you guys want to, if anybody wants to come on, you guys are listening to this, you guys want to come on the show, let us know. Oh, yeah. What was, where was our guest today that was supposed to show up, by the way? Uh, uh, tummy ache. God's give his, God gives his rumbliest tummies to his <sighs> strongest warriors. Yeah. You got Man. the rumbly tumblies. Mm-hmm. Upsetting stuff. So, okay. Um, yeah, if you want to come on, hit us up. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, I think we're going to have a guest next week. I got to text him. It's either next week or the week after that. It's one of them, I guess. <laughs> Figure it out. Uh, maybe we'll have Evan on. Maybe we'll have, I don't know, maybe we got to get Trid on here or something. Or, sure. Or bring Adam back because we got to talk about how I was full honk shoe, honk shoe on the Carolina Panthers, and he was not. Dude, he gave him a lot of wins. I yep. should have been honk shooing with you. I should have brought out my nightgown and my cap and my little candle on a stick. Can't, yeah, the candle on the plate would have really helped you out there. Yeah, I think, you know, a big cup of water, like the Mongo cup of water. You know what oh, I'm dude, wake up in the middle of the night, fucking take a big old sip of that. Yeah, that's yeah. how I should have been sleeping on the Bengals. Absolutely. I mean, hey, the Panthers. Uh, hey, guys, we appreciate you being here. Uh, Twitter.com slash Steam Machine. Twitter.com slash Owen Gosh Dominant. I refuse to say X.com. Uh, TikTok.com slash Steam Machine. I actually posted a clip from the show on that. It did okay. And I've been posting uh, more of the. Uh, I'm, I'm posting another Grubbuds TikTok. Spotify, so. Apple Music, YouTube. Uh, yeah. Like, comment, subscribe. Tell your mom. Patreon. It's a good show. For See you guys.